Hey everyone and welcome back to Studio 3B. This video assumes that you already have a working Hackintosh computer and you want to try Monterey on a separate SSD. Let's get started. As you can see here, I have a current working version of Big Sur and I am going to install Monterey on a separate SSD just to try it out. I'm going to install it and show you what I need to do to install it from my architecture. First things first, always go to the document Dortania guide open core and we're going to go to the making the installer in Mac OS guide. First thing you do is open a terminal, copy that command that they give you and run it to download the Mac OS installer. Put in your password, choose the version of Mac OS you want. In our case, it's Monterey and I'm going to choose 12.3 so that's number one so enter number one this will take some time we're downloading the complete installer from the web so depending on your internet connection it will take various times once it says the install was successful it will continue to run working around an Apple bug this part took a few minutes so you have to be patient like I said make sure you read through the guide in all its steps. It says we recommend moving the install app to applications folder before executing commands. So let's go to the macOS installer directory and copy that installer. Open the DMG file and copy that installer to the application directory. This is the installer in the DMG file. Let's copy that. Put in your password. Okay guys, once that's done, we're going to go to the next step in the document. We're going to skip the legacy OS section and go to setting up the installer. First thing we're going to do is format the USB to Mac OS extended journal and GUID partition map. So go to disk utility. If you haven't already, make sure the USB is inserted. Go to view, show all devices. Select your external drive, click erase and I'm gonna call it USB. Make sure it says GUID partition map. Click erase. Once it's done, click done. Go back to the document. Now we're gonna run a command called create installed media. Copy this command, and what I recommend doing is going to a text editor and modifying the command first. Paste the command in there. We're going to rename macosbigsur.app to macosmonterey.app and I called the volume USB, so instead of my volume, I'm gonna call it USB. Once the command looks correct, copy that. Go to a terminal. You could type clear to clear the screen. Command V to paste that command. Put in your password. It says they're gonna erase the volume once again, so type Y for yes. If you get any errors regarding the size of your disk, make sure you have at least 16 gigabytes free space on your USB. Okay guys, is that 100%, but we're still waiting. This takes quite some time, just warning you. Okay, we've currently reached 100% and the install media is now available. Next thing we're gonna do is go back to the document. Okay, go to setting up the open core's EFI environment. Go to mount EFI, open that link in a new tab. Go to code download zip, open that zip. Okay, go to the mount EFI download, click on the command, click control, click, open. If you haven't run this command already, allow it to open. Click one for install macOS Monterey. Put in your password. Now we have the USB's EFI directory mounted right here. It's currently empty. Go back to the web document. Go to setting up open cores EFI document. Go to setting up EFI. For 62-bit hardware, you want to copy the x64's EFI directory. So go to open core package releases. Open a new tab. Go to debug. Click that to download. Open the zip, expand it, go to x64 and copy the EFI. Paste that in the EFI volume of the USB. Then we're gonna go back to the document, read through every line. Next thing we're gonna do is delete everything we don't need out of the EFI directory. It tells you exactly what files to keep and which files you don't need. So expand EFI, expand each directory, and delete the files you don't need. Now your directory should look like this. Next thing we're going to do is gather our files. Go to hfsplus.efi and click download. You want to keep this file. Go show in finder, copy that file, move that to efi oc drivers. Go back to gathering files. 
Next, we're going to download our kernel extensions, or KEX files as they're referred to. Go to Virtual SMC, download the debug, open that zip, expand it, and go to KEX. Depending on your architecture, you're going to need certain files. You absolutely need Virtual SMC. And I'm going to command click SMC processor and Super IO because I need those also. Copy those, go to the EFI OC KEX and paste that there. Next, go back to your document and download Lilu. Copy that file and put that in the KEX folder. Next, we're going to download whatever green, the debug version. Open that zip, copy whatever green.kex, paste that in KEX. Apple ALC is used for onboard audio. I'm going to avoid that because I don't need it. Since I have an Intel Ethernet NIC, I'm going to download Intel Mousy. Copy that KEX, put it in EFI KEX. For USB, since this is an upgrade, you could use your USB map that we've already made for Big Sur or Catalina or whatever version of Mac OS you currently have right now. So you don't need to use USB in Jackdaw. Copy the USB map and put that in your KEX directory. Go through each line and make sure you don't need any other KEX. Next, we're going to download our ACPI AML files. For my Haswell architecture, I'm going to download the plug, pre-built, and download that file. Copy that file, put that on your USB's ACPI directory. Next, we're going to go to the SSDT EC file, go to pre-built, and download the SSDT EC desktop. Download that file, show in Finder, copy that file, and go to the USB ACPI directory and paste that in the ACPI directory. Next, go to your particular architecture's config section. Download proper tree. Command click the command, click open, click open. Next, we're gonna to go to our downloads. Go to the open core directory that you downloaded. Go to docs and copy sample.plist and paste that in your EFI OC directory. Rename the file to config.plist. Next, go to proper tree and click file, open. Go to the EFI OC and open your config.plist. Delete the warnings. Go to file, OC clean snapshot and select your OC directory on your USB. Now it's added all the files in your OC directory that's required to the config.plist. Save the file. Next, go through the document in complete detail and make sure you set every config value to the correct value. Make sure you read device properties carefully. For my system, I'm going to use the internal GPU. That's because NVIDIA cards are no longer supported. So I have to add a new element. Next, I'm going to add another element for this value. I'm going to copy this value since I'm using a Haswell iGPU. Next, I'm going to create an element called device ID. I'm going to copy this value since I have an HD 4600 iGPU. Next, I'm going to delete the original element because it's not needed. Make sure you save your file. Continue to go through and set all your config values properly. For XHCI port limit, I'm going to leave that as false. That's because I'm using a USB map. Make sure you type the word optional here if that's required for your architecture. Always save your file. Another critical item is the boot args. Make sure you get this correct. Because I have an NVIDIA graphics card, I'm going to copy this flag as well. Put that in my boot args. Save your file. For keyboard, I'm going to put English, US. That can be a string and it can be pasted directly in like that. For platform info, make sure you download GenSymbios, open the zip, run GenSymbios.command by control clicking, click open, and click open here. So I'm not going to show you what I'm doing next because I don't want to have my serial number copied, but click three, generate Symbios. For the Symbios version, I'm going to put my Symbios, which is iMac 17,1. Put the appropriate Symbios for your architecture in. 
The screen will be presented with a list of values for type, serial, board serial, SMU UID, and Apple ROM. Copy those values and paste them into your config.plist as the document specifies. Next, continue to scroll down and finish off the configuration. Ignore invalid flex ratio for me is going to be yes. For APFS version, I'm going to put negative one. I'm going to put negative one for both min date and min version. Save my document. Next, I'm going to reboot into the BIOS and change my display to my internal GPU. And I'm also going to change my HDMI cables to go into my internal GPU. Go to the Apple logo, click restart. When you get the boot screen, press delete a couple times. Go to advanced mode, go to advanced, go to system agent configuration, graphics configuration, primary display should be iGPU, iGPU memory should be 64 megs, iGPU multi-monitor is enabled in my case. Next thing we're going to do is exit, save changes and reset, and put the HDMI cable into the motherboard's HDMI slot. Now you're going to want to reboot by clicking the reset button. Press delete a couple times. Go to boot menu and click your USB device. You're presented with a list of boot options. Go to install Mac OS Monterey external. If you made it this far, you've done pretty well. Next, go to disk utility. If you're brave, you can wipe out your current SSD and format that, or as I did, insert a new SSD, and call it Monterey SSD. I'm going to erase this disk for demonstration purposes. Format APFS, erase, click done. Next, exit disk utility. Go to install Mac OS Monterey. Click continue. Click agree. Click agree again. Choose the SSD of choice. Click continue. Now the installer is going to run. It will reboot several times, and on each reboot, you'll need to choose the USB as the boot device. So stand by so you can watch for reboots. Go to boot menu. Choose your USB. Press enter on Mac OS installer. Now we wait a little longer. Next, make sure you click delete a couple times to get to the BIOS, click the boot menu, and click the USB drive. Press enter on Mac OS installer. Next, after cycling through a bunch of text, you're gonna reboot, press delete, choose the USB drive from the boot menu. Next, you're gonna select Monterey SSD. Another reboot, press delete, choose the USB. Choose Monterey SSD. Congratulations, you've installed Mac OS Monterey. Now go through the typical steps for configuration. I'm not gonna set up iCloud or restore from a previous version yet because I'm not ready to migrate to Monterey. Congratulations, you made it to Mac OS Monterey and you are now logged into your operating system. Next thing you're going to want to do is get your EFI off your USB and put it onto the SSD of the operating system. So go to a browser, search for mount EFI.command, go to the Corp Newt website from GitHub, go to code download zip, wow, go to downloads, control click the mount EFI command and click open, click open, install Python. Let's close this terminal. Let's try to run mount EFI command again. Select one, install Mac OS Monterey, that's your USB. Great, now we're gonna to go to our USB, EFI, copy the EFI folder. Put that on your desktop. 
Next, go back to your downloads and run mount EFI command again. Next, mount the EFI folder for Monterey SSD. Go to that EFI folder. Copy the EFI folder from your desktop. And copy it into the EFI volume on the Monterey SSD. Great, now we should be able to boot in debug mode straight from the SSD. Here's the true test. Eject the installer. Unplug the USB. Click Apple. Restart. Press delete a couple times when the reboot happens. You should have a new boot option called UEFI OS on the correct SSD, that's Monterey SSD. That's my Kingston drive. It boots much faster now. Save your USB, because you might need it, but now you're booting without the USB. Next is to go into the post install steps. There's a link in the description for the Big Sur post install steps, and those are very similar to the Monterey install steps. So please see that guide for the rest of the install steps. But basically what you're gonna do is turn everything into release mode and turn on the GUI picker. You're pretty much all the way there. USB is already mapped and you're good to go. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.